In this video, we're going to answer once and for all the question, how big is the alternating group? So just by way of reintroduction, a sub n, where n is a positive integer, is the alternating group on n elements. And we define that to be the set of all sigma, all permutations in s sub n, the symmetric group on n elements such that sigma is even. And as always, even means sigma can be written as a product of an even number of transpositions. All right, so we're gonna try and figure out what is the order of the group a sub n. Well, let's start with an easy one. <laughs> let's say n equals one. If n is one, then a sub one is just, well, it's actually just this set because s sub one is the set of all bijections of one thing. The only bijection of one element is just the identity permutation, which is even because it is a product of no transpositions. Uh, there, there are literally are not any transpositions that we could use in s sub one or a sub one. So a sub one is just the identity subgroup, which means the order of a sub one is one, same as s sub one. But after that, things get a little bit more interesting. So let's assume that n is greater than one. Now just thinking about this for a minute, if I'm thinking, okay, well, how many even permutations are there? And I might as well also ask the question, how many odd permutations are there? And you might guess that even and odd being sort of dual to each other, uh, they're the same size of set. In other words, there are as many even permutations as there are odd permutations. And that would be a correct guess. That is what we're gonna prove. exactly as many even permutations as odd ones. So that's our claim. But we're gonna prove it in this video. All right, so what we're gonna do is, uh, let's first define some symbols here. We know that a sub n, as always, is the set of even permutations. I'm just gonna write that very informally like this. There we go. Uh, so what about a symbol for the odd permutations? Those do not form a subgroup because for one thing, they don't include the identity permutation, it's even. So I'm gonna invent this symbol. I'm gonna call it a sub n tilde. So it's not a subgroup, it's just a subset. But it's the set of all odd permutations in S sub n. So I take all of those, put those together, that's A sub n tilde. So that's like the dark world version of A sub n. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to prove that A sub n and A sub n tilde, those are the same size of set. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to build a bijection between a n and a n tilde. Uh, so why would we want to do that? Well, if we have a bijection between two finite sets, and if n is finite, then these are both finite. If we have a bijection between two finite sets, then those sets have to have the same size. Uh, because what I'm saying if I have a bijection is every element of here corresponds to some element over here. And every element of this set is part of that correspondence. That is every element over here corresponds to exactly one over here because that function is one to one and on two. So having a bijection would prove that these two sets are the same size. So that's what we're gonna try and prove in this video. The bijection though is a little bit unnatural uh, in the sense that there's, there's nothing particularly elegant about it. In fact, I'm gonna to have to make something up in order to create this bijection, but here's how I'm gonna do it. We're gonna define function f from a sub n to a sub n tilde in the following way. Given a sigma in a sub n, so in other words, an even permutation, I'm gonna define f of sigma to be this permutation. Sigma multiplied on the left or composed on the left with the transposition one, two. Kind of random, right? By the way, the reason I can do this is because 
n is greater than 1. If n weren't greater than 1, I couldn't even write this transposition down because it wouldn't exist. But if n is at least 2, then I have that transposition. Okay, so why in the world would I do that? Well, remember, I'm trying to define a function that takes even permutations to odd permutations. So for us to even talk about this function, I need to make sure that we're doing that. Uh, so if, if sigma is an even permutation, then I'm taking that even permutation and multiplying it by one more transposition. Well, okay, so what does that do? That means I'm taking this permutation, which is composed of an even number of transpositions. Remember, each tau represents the transposition. And I'm multiplying by one more transposition. So now, altogether, I have an odd number of transpositions, which means that the composition of these two permutations will be an odd permutation. In other words, this whole thing will belong to a sub n tilde. It will be odd. Okay, so this shows that f is well-defined. In fact, let's write that part of the argument down. We know f is well-defined. And here I'm using well-defined just to mean that it actually does map elements of this set into this set, because that's kind of a big claim there. Like if f could take one of these to an even permutation, this function wouldn't even be defined. At least it wouldn't have codomain a sub n tilde. So f is well-defined because for any even permutation in a sub n, sigma can be written tau r through tau 1 for some tau 1, tau 2, up to tau r with r even. And then if I multiply that whole mess by the transposition 1, 2, so then f of sigma equals 1, 2 times sigma, which is 1, 2 times tau r all the way through tau 1. This is an odd permutation. consisting of r plus 1 transpositions. So that means f of sigma is odd. Thus, f of sigma belongs to our target set, a sub n tilde. I guess I didn't really add a whole lot by writing that out. I just wanted to frame it as proof that this function was well-defined, because I feel like that's a good thing to do when we define a function that's not obviously well-defined from the domain into the codomain. Okay, so anyway, we have a well-defined function f, but is it a bijection? Now that's what we got to figure out. So let's see if we can prove that. Uh, well, first let's show f is one to one. So let's suppose sigma 1 and sigma 2 both belong to a sub n such that f of sigma 1 equals f of sigma 2. Well, then what do we know? Let's interpret that statement. Uh, we know what f does. f takes each of these and multiplies by the transposition 1, 2. So then we know this is true. But then look, uh, we could do any number of things at this point. For example, we could use left cancellation and just get rid of the one, two. Uh, we could also multiply both sides of the equation on the left by the transposition one, two again to cancel it. I'll just use left cancellation. By left cancellation, this means that sigma one equals sigma two. And that's what we wanna show. We wanna show that if f of sigma 1 equals f of sigma 2, then sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal. So this means f is 1 to 1. Super. So we're almost there. What's left is to show that f is on 2. So for this, we need to assume that we have some element of our codomain. Let's go back up and remind ourselves what that is. Uh, there it is. 
Okay, so we need to assume we take some element here in a sub n tilde and show that there is some even permutation which will map to it. That would show that f is on 2. So to show f is on 2, let's suppose, and I'm going to use a different letter here. I'm going to say suppose mu belongs to our codomain. And the reason I'm doing this is just because we were using sigmas for domain elements. I would like to use a different letter just for style sake for a codomain element, even though these are both <clears throat> letters representing permutations in S sub n. Okay, so we're going to suppose mu is in A sub n tilde. That is, mu is <clears throat> an odd permutation. So we want to show that there is some sigma in a sub n such that f of sigma equals mu. Well, what would be needed for that to be the case? Let's just come over here and do some scratch work real quick. For that to be the case, I would need the transposition 1, 2 multiplied by sigma to equal u. So I can think of this as an equation that I'm solving for sigma. I need to figure out what sigma would make this the case. Well, if I'm solving for sigma, the first thing I'm going to do, the first impulse, is to get rid of that transposition 1, 2, which I will do by multiplying on the left by another 1, 2. Aha! Because that's the inverse of 1, 2. So I'm multiplying on both sides on the left by 1, 2. And then that gets rid of the 1, 2 on the left, so I just have sigma. So sigma is <clears throat> transposition 1, 2 times mu. So that's what I'm going to pick for my sigma there. So let's pick sigma equals transposition 1, 2 times mu. And I claim that f of sigma is exactly mu, which is what I want. Well, this is true because f of sigma is equal to f of 1, 2 times mu, which is, well, what is f of something? f is take that thing and multiply it by the transposition 1, 2. Okay, which means these are going to cancel each other out, and I'm left with mu, which is what I wanted. And since I was able to do this for any mu, for any mu in a sub n tilde, now, wait a minute, I just realized I forgot to do something important, because I picked sigma, but sigma can't be just any old permutation. Sigma needs to be a permutation in a sub n. That's our domain. So sigma belongs to a sub n. Why? Well, that's because mu consists of an odd number of permutations, or sorry, odd number of transpositions, and I'm multiplying by one more of them. So that means sigma consists of an even number of transpositions. So this is since mu is odd and sigma has one more transposition. So this is a good learning moment, actually, because when we show that a function is on 2, we don't have to just show that there's something out there in the world that maps to mu or maps to our codomain element. We have to show that there's something in the actual domain of this function that does that. And the domain here consists of just uh, even uh, even permutations. So anyway, now I think we've shown, therefore we've shown f is on 2. And so since we've shown 1 to 1 and on 2, f is a bijection. Hooray! So what does all this mean? Let's zoom out and take the uh, 30,000 foot view here. So let's see what it was we were doing. Uh, yeah, there we go. We were trying to build a bijection between these two sets, a n, the even permutations, and a n tilde, the odd permutations. And I think we've done that now. We have, <clears throat> we've done this. So what does that mean? That means that these two sets, a sub n and a sub n tilde, have the same cardinality. Okay, but the even and odd permutations, as pointed out in previous videos, these together make up 
S sub n, and they're disjoint from each other. In other words, a permutation can never be both odd and even. We've proven that as well. So these are two disjoint sets. Uh, together they make up the uh, all of the elements of the symmetric group on n elements, and they both have the same size. We know that the order of S sub n is n factorial because there's n factorial ways to permute n objects. So that means that each of these subsets, the even permutations and the odds, has to be half of the elements of S sub n. Therefore, the subgroup A sub n, remember the other one is not a subgroup. The odd permutations don't include the identity. But this subgroup has order n factorial divided by 2. That is provided that n is greater than 1. If n is equal to 1, then the order of a sub n is just 1.